Here we go. Ready? Okay, so I'm just going to ramble here. This all started as a project called Retune Nashville. I was contacted by the owner of my gallery in Nashville, Tinny Contemporary. She asked if I'd be interested in helping out the musicians who weren't insured. Taking a guitar donated by one of the musicians and turning it into a piece of art that would then be auctioned off. And I said, yeah, that sounds cool, especially if I can make it work somehow. I've been kind of influenced by the steampunk, which has to do with things that work, making things in the spirit of blending technology with Victorian aesthetic, the sense of craftsmanship. I was contacted just before I came down and I was told this is Rich Eckhart, who's the lead guitar player for Toby Keith, had seen my work and requested that I do his guitar. I said, that's fine as long as I can fix it and make it work. So I went down there, it was a really nice guitar, sparkly blue, it had been floating around for a while, paint was cracked up, neck was discolored, all the uh, tuning machines and hardware were gone. I took it home, first thing I did was stripped all that paint off, which was, which was a nightmare. I looked at it and I've been working on some guitars myself lately for the newly formed Postal, Postal Universal, Universal Airship and, and Fabrication, Fabrication Company. Company. I looked over some of my designs to kind of see what would fit in the Telecaster format. I looked at the shape and this is kind of the shape that I arrived at with the guitars that I've been making, my personal aesthetic. I found that one of the shapes worked quite well with the Telecaster. Um, attached it, cut it out, sanded it down, and kind of stained it this ugly brown. I wanted it to look like it had been floating in the river for a couple of weeks. I wanted that feeling of a nice old piece of wood. I covered it with a veneer that I believe was ash. I sliced it, floated it in water for a few days till the grain rose up and started getting that feeling. What I do with my necks on the Postal Airship Fabrication guitars is carve a um, scroll into the top which is time intensive, but worth it. So in order to make the pick plate, I, I first designed a shape that I'm fond of. I have these sheets of 1930s kick plate brass, which I love. And you simply painstakingly cut it out and file it down and, and, until, it, until it's right. For the bridge, I had these dresser pulls from a 40s waterfall dresser. I took a standard Fender Stratocaster tailpiece, cut it down to as little as I could without it disintegrating, and that made the tailpiece. The controls, they are mounted in a deco door plate. It turned out the switch mounts perfectly where the doorknob went, all I really have here is a, a volume and a switch to turn the guitar on and off. What we have here, friends and neighbors, is a humbucker pickup that's been floating in the flood, or was floating in the flood for a couple of weeks. When I got them, someone had pulled the wiring completely out, so there were two of them, and by messing with the first one and messing up the first one, I managed to wire the second one. is the house and the house is it. It's all one thing. 
main part was actually built out of an armoire that I found. And this here is an articulated hand. I love the way it's letting go. I don't know, that somehow has something to do with the whole devil coming to Nashville and the flood being unleashed. But I kind of do. I had a shadow of a tap, and I was working off the shadow. The photograph back here was designed to go behind this window. It's actually several photographs. I knew that I had this one shot that I had taken in the Midwest of clouds with rays of sun breaking through it. The city line is actually, I believe, Austin, Texas in 1916, when they had their flood. The water and houses are various shots I had of water and houses. I remember seeing news footage of people airlifting horses out of the flood. And I was thinking about that, and I remember I had a shot of a bucking bronco from a rodeo. I took the rider away and the harness away and added some splashing around his feet. The, the woman might be good news or might not be such good news looking through your window. The body is a, a woman who is standing in the ocean in the Gulf Coast. The head is someone who was standing in the shower in San Francisco. Now we're going to talk about the amplifier a little bit. Started out life in a pawn shop, broken, desperate, lonely. Took it home, changed the speakers out to a couple of Japanese Sony speakers. We changed the on-off switch to a simple one that you can use from the front. The outside's covered in tooled leather, and the front is from a 1930s radio. Permanently attach the guitar to the amplifier. Um, we're going to do this by crazy gluing the jacks into both the guitar and the amp. We're doing this because this is a unified piece. This is a piece of work and it speaks to the flood and salvation and Nashville. If you unplug the guitar to take it down to the bar, it ain't this piece anymore. Plug it in and first thing, make sure that it makes a noise. And it doesn't. I'm gonna have to have the amplifier plugged in. Okay. Should we just be surprised whether it works or not? Turn the amp on. To adjust the tone um, that you want from distorted to more distorted to maybe even more distorted. asking yourself, hey, does this damn thing even work? <laughs>